Buffalo. Uh, I have my first question is actually about someone who's not on the the roster, Dalton Wingo. Um, can you talk about that situation and and uh, what happened with Dalton and why he's he's not on the team apparently? Uh, yeah, I mean, he just uh, decided to retire, um, just uh, ready to move on with his life and, um, you know, getting married and, and, and things like that. So um, it just was a decision that he made um, that, uh, you know, I'm sure some of it had to do with just everything going on in the draft and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, he just felt like uh, it was in his best interest just to move on with the rest of his life and decided that, it, you know, we, Baseball wasn't something that was, a uh, you know, I guess as important or, or whatnot. So um, his fiance and him just decided they wanted to, to move on. So retired. Coach, good to see you again. Uh, talk a little bit about your schedule and in particular handling your pitching staff with these four game weekend series. Yeah. I mean, it'll be a little different um, just because of, you know, the double headers or whatnot. I mean, obviously playing four games a weekend or four games a week. So canceling the midweek games obviously makes that a lot easier. So you're still playing four games. Um, so, you know, obviously we always have four starters. So um, that doesn't change in that aspect, but the bullpen, it, it just makes you have to be a little deeper and have to manage your bullpen maybe a little bit differently just to try to um, make sure you, you have enough arms for the weekend or whatnot. Obviously we know the, um, the, the league, uh, <clears throat> increase the 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 roster for the weekend so that allowed us to put a few more pitchers on um so did some things to try to alleviate some of that pressure but just in terms of obviously wanting to throw your best guys I mean there's a lot of games where you know you might throw some guys just to get work in or whatever the case is and you know you got to be a little bit more cautious of that understanding that there's a four game weekend um, to make sure that you, you know, you don't use anybody too much where you can't use them again or that they're not as effective. So um, but I, I think it changes it a little bit, but, you know, depth for the week is, is still needed. And that was always the case with the midweek games and those midweek games being so important for programs like ours, where, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to be an at large. I mean, it's not like you can just throw those games away and it's just who cares. I mean, you got to win those games. So um, from that aspect, and I mean, it, it, it doesn't change it a ton. Coach, can you just uh, talk more about how this schedule came together? I know you, you always have schedules laid out, laid out years in advance. Obviously, COVID changed all that. You got to scramble and find teams. You've got midweek games. It usually would be midweek or now weekend series kind of back and forth. Just kind of talk about what a scramble it was to put it together and whether top to bottom, this could be the best, the toughest schedule you've ever played. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was nuts. You know, some people – hit the panic button back in you know, May and June, just kind of, you know, trying to f predict and see the future about what was going to happen. And, you know, I tried to lay low and just kind of let things play out. Just didn't want to make decisions too early. Um, you know, and I think I ended up making the best decision for my personal health. You know, I think I, I talked to some guys that it, it felt like every month they were switching games and people were canceling on them and, it was just kind of, you know, they, they probably flip flop their schedule about four or five times during the course of, you know, June till till January. And I just kind of laid low the teams that we were playing. You know, we just we all agreed that let's just wait and see what happens. Um, and then obviously January 1st hit and then it was just absolute chaos um, as we kind of things started getting announced on what the conference schedules were going to be like, um, what teams were going to be doing. And, and obviously, if we got closer to budgets and all that it just became a mad chaos and a mad dash I mean it, I, I don't for about a week and a half I, I think I was on the phone for 18 hours a day dealing with the schedule and you know talking to people and trying to figure out if they were going to be able to play or not and then obviously trying to figure out who could be replacing and and doing all that and then trying to figure out where those games are at I mean it was it was it was crazy um, but at the end of the day I love our schedule and again I still don't know what the NCAA is doing with RPI or whatnot and it's it's really hard to predict what they're going to decide. And so at the end of the day, it's still a great schedule. Um, I mean, uh, probably the toughest one with, with the teams that we got lined up, obviously, um, you know, opening up against FAU, who's a perennial top 30 team in the country. Um, and, and then obviously at Ole Miss, and, which is going to be a top five team. And, uh, and then North Florida and Jacks, Jacksonville and Liberty. I mean, those are all usually 
um, you know, top, top 40, top 50 type team. So definitely a huge challenge, but at the end of the day, like that's, I mean, I love challenging our kids, especially in our conference. Like we, as good as our schedule is, like our conference is even better um, than our non-conference. So we have to be prepared. We have to be ready to go. Um, and this will give us the best opportunity to compete at a high level, to prepare our kids. And uh, we play a lot of road games, which is unusual, um, which I think is good to prepare us to be on the road. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of positives to it. Um, I think it'll prepare us for the tough conference schedule that we have uh, coming up. And at the end of the day, it'll prepare us for, you know, regionals and, and super regionals and college world series. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what we're, that's what we're striving to do. So um, I think this, this schedule prepares us for that and, it's a good challenge and, you know, I'm excited for it. Coach, uh, in the past two seasons, you've put up a 34 and 15 record at home. Uh, UCF announced that Johnny Leona Park will only have a 25% capacity this season. Do you think having less fans this season is going to impact the team as much as it should or have any play on uh, the performance? I mean, I don't think it'll have any play on the performance. I mean, I think if, you know, I, I there's, there's games where the crowd matters, you know what I mean? Whether that's positively or negatively, whether you're on the road or whether you're at home. So um, I don't know how many games that is, but I mean, close games at the end of the, at the end of the game, um, you know, putting pressure on the opposing pitcher or the opposing team and, and big moments um, that can definitely affect a team. Um, you know, so I, I don't know if it, it really affects us. It might affect the game a little bit where again, you're playing a team. It's the ninth inning, a one run game. You got a freshman on the mound you know, and you've got a thousand people that are, that are, you know, booing him or heckling him or, or just making him feel uncomfortable that maybe gives us an advantage. Um, <clears throat> so maybe we don't have that as much, uh, but how many times does it happen a season? I'm sure it's not as much as, as you probably think. So, um, you know, and, and you really got to have a huge crowd to really make a difference from the first pitch. Um, so, I mean, I think there's definitely going to be some negative aspect to it that, that could help us, um, that maybe it won't, uh, but at the end of the day, like we got to go out and, and outplay the other team. Um, and um, whether there's one person in the stands or 5,000 in the stands, that's, that's on me and, that, and that's on the players. So, um, you know, we, we can't control that. We just got to go out and, and play, play baseball. Coach, uh, I remember during the summer uh, when Jordan Rathbone decided that he was going to come back, he mentioned specifically that there was unfinished business with this team because of how well you guys played last year how the season ended, uh, you know, also last year and how, how quickly it ended. I know that was really demoralizing because how, how good this team was. How much of that do you feel like permeates throughout the team? If there is unfinished business with those who, have, who are back for this year because of how well you guys played last season? Well, one, I'm, I'm really excited that Jordan's back. I mean, it was a huge, um, you know, kind of positive thing in a negative, in a negative time, knowing that he decided that um, – you know, he wanted to come back and, and be a part of our program again. It was a, definitely a shot of adrenaline, I think, for the program. And, you know, he's been such a big part of our team, especially the last year that I, I'm, I'm grateful for him to come back. But, um, you know, I think definitely, I think that, you know, we have goals that we want to do for our program and, and things that I really felt like was, you know, one of the biggest differences in this team um, compared to especially the, the last two teams that we had, you know, you know, my second and third year was, team was very, very driven to be great. Um, I think that the, the culture and the camaraderie was um, something unlike I'd ever seen before, especially here at UCF. So um, there was this, this excitement, but a drive to, to want to be great, to put this place on the map. And, um, you know, obviously we, we felt like we had started on that path. And obviously the, the, the sweep at Auburn was huge and um, being 12th in the country and, and doing all the things we were doing. I think that they felt like they were, they were doing exactly what they kind of set off to do. And um, you guys have to give a lot of credit to the players. This just, just the drive is what was awesome, but they haven't lost that. You know what I mean? I feel like they felt like they were going on the right path and, and all of a sudden the path just blew up um, and there was no, you know, you're always going to hit roadblocks and things and you got to, you got to go a different path. And we didn't get that opportunity. We didn't, we didn't get to another path. The path just stopped and, and it was over and there was no, there was no avoiding it. Um, and so I really feel like they feel like there was just unfinished business, things that they thought that they were on the, on the path to do and they wanted to see it through and um, they didn't get a chance to do that. I feel like it's kind of 
permeated through the through the club and the guys are just excited to get back out and compete and kind of continue where they start uh continue where they finished and um but I feel like they feel like there's something that they want to accomplish and something that they want to prove and they they didn't get to finish the job last year and by nothing of their own doing it wasn't some other team came in and beat us or um you know or, or whatever the case is like it just the 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 pandemic ended it all. So um, I don't want to say it's a, it's a new year, but I feel like they feel like it's still the same job that they started and they need to finish it. Um, and I'm excited to go out and see them compete and do that. EC used the preseason pick to win the American, your team scheduled to play four in Greenville. Uh, talk a little bit about the respect you have for them as competitors. And does the American go through them or you think you, your team has a chance to win the, the, the league? I mean, I think they've been the the shining star of our league, especially. I mean, since I've been here, I mean, they've had one bad year since I since I uh, since I, you know, the, I think that was my first year. But really, the last four years and, and the years before that, I mean, they're in super regionals, they're hosting regionals, um, they're usually top twenty five team the entire year and, and top twenty five team, <clears throat> you know, in the preseason. They're usually picked to win the league. So, I mean, I feel like that they're the gold standard of of the league, and I feel like that until somebody comes in and knocks them off. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't be the team to beat and, and the, the team that everybody has to go through. Um, you know, they just done a great job. Cliff's done a, a tremendous job of recruiting good players. They're tough minded. They have, um, you know, they, they, they play with kind of a chip on their shoulder and, um, you know, very tough, tough all the way around offensively, defensively. They do a lot of little things, right. Uh, they play with a lot of emotion and, um, you know, so, I mean, I, I, I picked him to win the league and, um, you know, I can't vote for our own team. So, um, but other, other than that, I mean, I feel like you have to feel like that they're the favorite and you have to go through them until somebody proves differently. Um, but I also know that our guys are, are ready for that challenge. They understand um, what's going on and what's at stake every week. And, but I, I feel like there's a lot of teams in our league that are really good. I mean, I don't know, you know, last few years, I mean, I think when you look at the preseason picks to win and the, and the, the final standings at the end of the year, I, I don't think they'd be very close. I think it's, you know, obviously my first year we were picked to come in eighth um, and, and they were first, we came in first. So um, I think that um, every team is difficult in our league. I think every team has a chance to compete for, for, for being the number one seed and for winning the regular season championship. And it's one of the great things about our league is there are no off weekends. You got to show up every weekend and compete. Um, you can't look forward to ECU. I mean, one, we can't look past FAU, but when we get to conference, like, you know, we open up with South Florida and Cincinnati, and, uh, South Florida twice. Like you know, those games are just as important as the ECU game. Uh, so uh, our guys understand that, but they also, I, mean, I think just from a national standpoint, ECU's done a great job of putting themselves at the top of the list of our, of our, of our league. I'm curious, as I've talked to other coaches about this, having gone through what we've gone through here over the last year, going through the fall practice, and then, you know, now getting ready for the season, is there things you've learned that you probably would not have done either with a schedule or just practice things with the team that you would not have done under normal circumstances, but you did now that you might do now moving forward because you think it, it will help your team moving forward long-term? Um. I mean, I don't know. It's tough to tell with some of the stuff with the schedule and everything because we haven't played. Um, and also the same thing. I mean, there's, I, mean, I don't see anything off the top of my head that I'm like, man, I will, I will always do this now going forward. Um, you know, um, but also, we also haven't played games yet. So, I mean, if, you know, we go 50 and six, like I'll just probably do the same thing we did this year or the next year. You know what I mean? Like if it works, like we'll just keep doing it. There's things I'm not happy about or things that I don't like about what we've had to do, but we're going to go 50 and six. I'm going to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Cause it obviously would work. So uh, it's tough to tell when you haven't played yet, but I, there's definitely nothing that I've been, um, you know, so like, Oh, wow, this really helped us or this really worked um, that I, that I'm, that I'm already making the decision that next year we, we have to continue to do this. Coach, uh, just regarding your your pitching staff, as you guys head into this FAU series, do you under, do you know uh, who your weekend rotation would be? And and even if not, if you're not willing to want to divulge it this early, um, just talk about I think the guys at the top of your staff there, Colton and Hunter. Yeah, 
No, I got no problem. I mean, Colton Gordon's going to go Friday night. I um, mean, he's, he's been our best guy. Obviously what he did last year, just to, um, um, just to kind of set the tone for our program and, and whatnot. And, you know, he's a, a very, obviously very talented. And I think he's even better than he was last year. I feel like he's, um, he's very meticulous in his process. And I think that's kind of changed and matured. Um, and so he's been our best guy in practice um, in the inner squads. He's done a great job. Um, I just think he has Friday night stuff and has obviously the age and the experience um, that he's deserved to pitch on Friday nights, um, you know, to start the season. So excited to see what he can do and, and what he brings to the table and, you know, just to continue the, the start that he had last year. But obviously I think everybody's really driven. And I think that all of our players realize, and we've talked about this, that, you know, we've talked about this before the like pandemic that, you know, you, you got to go about every game. Like it's the most important game of the season. And you just never know when, when, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed, you know, and we just talk about that in life. And I think the pandemic really proved that, that, you know, when we went to play Miami, we didn't understand that that was going to be the last game we ever got to play together. Um, and so we have to, we have to understand that, that let's really talk about it. Like it actually can happen. And so, um, you know, we, we, we've got to go out and just and, and do our thing. And I think Colton, you know, understand with the draft and things like that, that you just never know. So go out and pitch like it's, it could be the last day, day you ever pitch. I feel like he's really bought into this, the, the process and the, and, and just so meticulous about his preparation um, that it's been fun to watch, you know, Hunter, Hunter Patterson is going to go on Saturday. Um, I think that his maturity level has just, um, I've seen such growth in him as a, as a person and as a player, um, you know, typical freshman last year where just, I thought that the external stuff just, just got to him too much, or if he had a bad inning or he gave up a run or he got in a situation, he just didn't understand how to manage it. And, um, obviously he's put on a lot of weight and, you know, his stuff is upticked, uh, but just the maturity level. And we always knew that he was going to be special and that he had this, ability to be really, really great. And it was just going to be about him taking this, the next step of taking ownership of his career. And uh, I think, the, again, the, the, the strides I've seen Hunter make, you know, the last nine months have been, um, have been really awesome to see. we been really proud of him as a person and proud of him as a, as a pitcher. And so he has done a tremendous job and it's been fun to, fun to see that grow. So he'll go on Saturday. Um, you know, I don't know what we're going to do on Sunday. We're going to probably TBD it. Um, you know, we've got some guys that are banged up, but obviously guys like Jackson Clare and, 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 and uh, AJ Jones and Zach Hunsaker, um, all these guys have the ability to, to pitch on Sunday for us um, if we need to. But I think we're going to go into Friday night and, and just figure it out, uh, try to win Friday night's game uh, with Colton on the mound. And then we'll go do the same thing on Saturday with Hunter on the mound. And then uh, we'll see where we're at after the game on Saturday and, and kind of determine where we need to go on Sunday. And obviously looking forward to, to Tuesday and just trying to put ourselves in the best situation to win, to win as many games as we can. Um, and then again, you know, all those guys and then the bullpen, obviously Litchfield and, and Billy McKay and, and all those guys that I mentioned before, if they're not starting, they got a chance to help us in the bullpen. So, um, you know, excited about the, the pitching staff, excited about the depth, um, you know, obviously when we, Kenny Sir will, will not be available week one. Um, hopefully he will be, a, you know, available in maybe week two or week three. We just don't know yet. Um, but that'll add again, another arm and a, more depth to our, to our, to our pitching staff. So really excited about the long-term, um, prognosis of our, of our staff, you know, uh, getting guys back like Nolan Lepkowski and, um, seeing what he's been able to do for the first time in two years, being on the mound and, and whatnot, you know, just seeing every time he goes out, looks a little bit better, a little bit better. Um, so again, excited about the guys that we have, um, you know, some of the young guys, I mean, Nick Otill has made some strides, uh, but Ben Vespi, Zach Bennett, uh, Nick Vieira, uh, Vince Bonani. I mean, those guys, Eli McCormick, um, you know, has made some jumps. So we, we got guys, you know, it's just going to put them in the right situations and, and see how it goes, but excited to see Colton and Hunter go after it Friday and Saturday, and then uh, we'll see what happens on Sunday. Yeah, David, just, can you just talk about the excitement level of just knowing you're about to get out there and play another baseball season? I it was unfortunate how things ended last year. I know there was a lot of uncertainty of what was going to happen. And now the fact that you've got a game coming up in a few days, just how excited are you for that? I mean, I'm super pumped up for it. Um, being my fourth year here at UCF and, and uh, 
you know, I've been hurt a lot uh, throughout my, my career here. So, I mean, every game for me is, is, is exciting just to, to get out there and play. Um, especially after last season ended uh, pretty abruptly. Um, the one season that, that I happened to be healthy and then the team was, was rolling. So, um, you know, I think everyone seems pretty excited to kind of pick up where we left off, especially the group of guys that are returning this year. Um, everyone just, just knows like it's time, like let's, let's do it. And, you know, trying to relay that to the younger guys and, and get them excited and, you know, hopefully pick up right where we left off. Do you play a little bit of what if with regards to 2020, what that season could have played out like for not only you, but the team? I mean, the, you know, the sky was the limit for that team in, in my opinion, you know, it didn't matter whether we were ranked, you know, I don't, I don't even know what we finished 12, 11, whatever. Um, that team always kind of, kind of had the, uh, the mindset that we were the number one team in the country. Didn't know, you know, didn't matter who we were playing, uh, who was on the mound. It didn't matter any of that. So, you know, unfortunate that it, that it had to end. Um, but I mean, I'm, I think everyone um, was on the same uh, train that, you know, we were going to go do things that you see a baseball team has never done before. David, coming into this year, I mean, obviously in the past few years, you've been a middle relief guy, but now with Jeffrey Higginson gone, we all know Jack Sinclair's back there, but it sounds like in some of the stuff I've been reading that you might be figuring into the ninth inning situation. I mean, uh, can you describe what you think your role would be on this team? Um, I mean, Jeff Higginson's a, a really big role to, to fill, um, you know, for anybody. So um, I definitely think that I, I'm kind of sliding towards that role, but, you know, Jack Sinclair is also going to be in there, especially when we get to these, these four game series on the weekend. Um, you know, I think that, you know, me and Jack Sinclair are going to be the ones trying to hold it down there at the end of the game, whether I'm throwing the ninth inning or, or he's throwing the ninth inning, you know, there might be situations where we have to throw more than, you know, three outs to get a save for the team. But um, that's definitely a role that I, you know, I'm being asked to, to fill this year. David, uh, kind of what's your expectation for the season? Also, when you look at, at the kind of schedule you're going to be playing, it's a little bit different. You've got, you know, four game conference series, four games in three days. You've got really quality competition pretty much every day. Games you play in the midweek are now kind of weekend series and non-conferences. Kind of what's your expectation for that? And how, how do you think you guys are going to fare this year? I mean, we're pretty fortunate to, you know, to be in Florida and have as much competition as we have, you know, right in our backyard here. Um, but as, as we work our way up this, this tier list of, of Florida schools, you know, it kind of puts a bigger target on our back. So now every weekend we're going to be getting everybody's best stuff and, and they're going to want to beat us just like, like we want to beat Florida and FSU, you know, now we're, we're starting to, to fill that role of uh, being that school for, for these other places that we get to play in Florida. Coach just mentioned quite a few pitchers. Who have you seen in camp that's caught your eye, that surprised you, that could come out there and surprise fans? Hmm. Um, I mean, I know Lovelady mentioned uh, Hunter Patterson. Um, you know, he's he's going from a, a role where he was filling some innings out of the bullpen, maybe getting a, a start on the midweeks, and now he's he's jumping right into the Saturday role, which was you know Trevor Holloway's. Um, role last year, who was, you know, arguably one of our, our best pitchers. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited to see what he does with, with that role and, and that opportunity, um, knowing he has pretty big shoes to fill. David, how would you say that you have improved from, from last year to this year, either stuff wise or mentality? How have you become a better pitcher? Um, yeah, I think I've developed more than, you know, last year I just relied a lot on my fastball. Um, and then throughout the fall, I did a little bit of um, starting or, you know, extended extended outings just to um, have more opportunities to throw, you know, uh, a breaking ball in, in, uh, in a changeup. And I think that, you know, my breaking ball and changeup definitely improved um, doing that, uh, which would allow me to uh, throw, you know, possibly um, – a little bit extended out of the bullpen. If not, you know, maybe pick up a start here and there. If I'm lucky. Anything else for Lich? 
Nope. Cool. All right. We are going to head on over to Jordan Rathbone then. Thanks, Thank you guys. Thanks, David. Well, Jordan, uh, welcome back to UCF. Uh, I know last year was, you know, obviously last year, uh, you know, kind of ended like it did. So you made the decision to come back. So how excited are you to come back for another season knowing it's inside? And do you feel like you have unfinished business? Uh, yeah, I'm fired up. I'm happy to be back. I think that uh, since the day the season got canceled last year, everybody's been kind of excited to get going back with this year, getting the games going. So, you know, I'm fired up. I'm happy to be back. Wouldn't rather be anywhere else in the country. So I'm just ready to play some games, honestly. We've been practicing for too long. Just want to get, get going with the games and go show what we can do. Taking Dalton out of the lineup, I guess fans are going to say, where's the offense going to come from? Who do you think is going to be able to step into his role in producing – and uh, what do you make of the offense going into this season? Uh, with our offense, I, I just think we have a lot of different tools and a lot of different ways we can win. Uh, we have guys top, top to bottom that I think can do big things just if they stay within themselves. I think uh, Nick Romano is probably going to have a big year this year. Um, he started off pretty good last year, but I think he'll show some better power numbers this year as well. We got guys like Tom and Pablo, who uh, with just another year of experience, I think they're going to be really, really good for us too. So it's just a matter of us doing all what we want to do at the plate and uh, just passing the baton to the next guy, just going up there, making tough at-bats for the pitchers, every single uh, guy throughout the game. And I just think it's, it's going to be pretty tough to get the 27 outs an easy way. Like we're going to be really gritty at the plate. We're going to fight with two strikes, drive runners in, do the right things, be – we're, we're a very coachable team, so I think we're just going to stay within the confines of our team offense and good things are going to happen. No one's going to have to go out of go out of their way to do something crazy every week to get us wins. We have enough depth where if we just do what we need to do, I think we'll be just fine. Jordan, there's a couple of uh, high caliber freshmen in that line on that offense with Alex Freeland and John Montez. Uh, I know the, the, the guys were the coaching staff was happy to have them because of the short draft. Uh, happy to have them on campus. What have you seen from those freshmen? I like those guys a lot. I think uh, the main thing I've seen from the freshmen and just the transfers coming in as a whole is just they kind of see what we have here. They see how we treat each other, how we act to each other. We're all we're all literally best friends, just trying to go after our goal and after our mission and be the best we can be. So I think they fit into that nicely. They're not trying to um, – do anything crazy or they're not nervous or scared of the moment. They just want to be part of a special program that we're trying to build. And we talk about leaving our legacy all the time. And I think they're doing the right things early on to get their body moving in the right way, getting the experience playing against us every day, just competing. It's been good to see, like they look, they look like they're a part of the UCF program. They're exactly what we want. And when we bring players in, so I expect them both to do good things this year. And then the years coming up too, I think, I think Montez is going to be really, really good. And this year, even, or next year, the year after, I think he, he has a pretty stroke from, from the left side. And then Freeland's obviously a very talented kid. So I expect a lot from both of them eventually. And even this year. You heard what coach said about ECU picked to finish first in the American. Uh, I imagine you think that UCF is going to have a say in that as well. I think we do for sure. Um, we try to just focus one day at a time and just know that today's the most important day of the season. Love Lady kind of hammers that into our heads. So we don't look too much into the rankings or what's happening down the road. But I know that in the locker room, we, uh, we definitely got a confidence about us that hasn't, that hasn't gone away. We, we were confident all last fall going into the season last year. Nobody really expected that much of us. And we came out and showed what we could do. And I feel like that same confidence and just wanting to wanted to be great, wanted to leave UCF better than the way we, we got it when we came here is just something we're all on the same page with. So I just think it's going to be tough for anybody to come in and just, and just beat us. If they're going to beat us, they're going to have to earn it. So we're ready. We're ready just to prove to the country that we're a, we're a real-time baseball team. We're not just some little brother in Florida. Jordan, not only because of your experience and your age, but also statistically, you had a really good year last year. Do you take ownership of this offense? I mean, like personally, do you see this this lineup and say to yourself that that it sort of begins with you that you see yourself as the the head of this offense? Um, I don't necessarily 
think of it like that. I just think that I have a plan that Teddy and the other coaches make with all of our hitters. And I know that if I execute my plan at the plate and do what I need to do, I think I'm going to help the team a lot and, and fill that role for what we need. We got a lot of guys. We got, we got Jeffrey Pena, who's maybe the fastest player in the country. That's probably going to lead off for us. So I know that he gets things going, probably going to be on third base within a couple of pitches, a lot of games this season. So I know that if I can just do my deal, swing at the right pitches, drive some runs in, I think it's going to lead to a, a lot of good things with the team as a whole, but I don't feel that pressure that I have to do too much or do something to lead the team. I'm just going to do, do my own job and stick with my process, make sure my routines are good every day. And then I think I'm going to contribute the way I'm supposed to contribute and everybody else is going to do their thing too. We, uh, as an offense, we all trust each other and we all we all get fired up to see each other have success. So I'm looking forward to see a lot of my boys hit some home runs and drive some runs in and do some things like that this year too. And you were asked about the offense earlier, but specifically with power, you know, replacing Dalton's power, you have power. Obviously Nick Romano can drive the ball to all fields, Ben Rushing has power. Where is that sort of like sudden pop going to come from this year? Anybody who has stood out to you? Um, I don't know if anybody stood up like that, but I know that we have, we have multiple guys in the lineup that can definitely, definitely hit a good amount of homers, whether it's, I think that just be like two through six or two through seven in our lineup, whether it's, uh, me, uh, Tom Jostin, Romano, Pablo, Josh Crouch, it's all these guys. I see them. They drive the ball in practice against our arms. Like we'll see guys hitting home runs against Hunter, pa Hunter Patterson and Colton and things like that. And so we know if, they're going to have success against those top level arms who are probably draft guys. We think they're going to drive runs in and hit for some power in the season too. So I expect us to hit a lot of homers and hit a lot of doubles. And this has been less of a concern to our, to our hitting culture as a whole. Like we don't really worry about where the power is going to come from because we know that we got some depth in all areas. We're going to drive runs in. We're going to, we're going to hit some homers and we're going to steal some bags. We're just going to try to beat you as many ways as possible. And, we're just, we're just really confident. We're ready to go. I guess I'll, I'll go Hunter. Uh, welcome back to UCF for your second year. I know you was a quite a memorable freshman season in more ways than one. What do you kind of take away from that experience? Kind of your first taste of college baseball, I guess, obviously before everything shut down. You know, it's like, it was kind of difficult just like how it ended and like didn't know what to do. So, uh, you know, I kind of went about my business and took like advantage of it and gained weight and uh, fortunate enough, like how me, Litch and uh, Bone were, you know, able to play summer ball. So I'm very fortunate for that. So, you know, it kind of sucked not to play my first year, like the rest of it, but, you know, it's all right. Talk about your confidence now going into the opening weekend and uh, you were in on this Zoom. What did you think of what Coach Lovelady said uh, about you and the pitching staff? Yeah, I definitely think my mentality changed. Um, and, like, I definitely think I've grown my confidence. You know, I'm, like, last year, uh, not, you know, the biggest, baddest guy on the mound. You know, you got a lot of guys in front of me. So, like, this year I feel like I'm a top guy. So, I got to feel the role. What did you feel like you learned during summer ball that maybe even helped you into fall ball? Because you had a you had a really successful fall ball season. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just like, I just thought like no one's going to be me and I have the best stuff out there. So like, I thought the hitters were, you know, they were fine. I mean, if they're going to do anything against me, like go at it, like I'm going to come at you with all my stuff. So I know it obviously was not a typical off season like it would have been. Of course, it wasn't a typical season either last year. But are there some areas now that you're more mature where you feel like you've improved on the mound? Maybe when you look back at your at your time last year, are there some areas where you think you're going to be a lot better this year? Yeah, I definitely think I'm going to be a like I, you know, my fastball, my my changeup, and my slider have all you know grown. Uh, I just I think it's gonna be a really good year for me, uh, Colton as well. So I think we're I think we're ready to get going. Coach Lovely you talked about Colton being the Friday starter. Just what have you seen from from Colton being I guess the leader of this staff? Colton's just a different breed. I mean, he works day in day out. Like it just seems like he's always at the field, uh, asking questions, talking with Audie. You know, he's always always trying to be better and. Uh, 
you know, I kind of like put the fire in him, I feel like. So I kind of like, I'm right behind him. Like I'm right there. So like, I got to like fight with him just like, but I, I mean, he deserves to be the Friday night guy. You heard Jordan talk uh, about the offense. How good can these guys be offensively? Uh, I think they're going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a good year for the hitters. Uh, just because, uh, you know, you got all the power guys in the front, like how J Bone said, and you got like the, uh, you got Pablo, uh, not, you know, Pena, Archer, just like the small ball guys. And then you got, like, you got, I mean, it's just a wide variety, a variety of uh, players coming at you. So they get the better of the pitchers? They get the better of the pitchers during camp? Yeah, I definitely think they did. I think they're, uh, yeah, they're a little bit better than the pitchers this year. Uh, I think we have some, you know, it's a it's a tough year and we have some shoes to fill. So hopefully we can do that. You have a couple of uh, new teammates, transfer teammates in that rotation, that pitching staff and AJ Jones and Kenny Sirwa. Uh, those guys are going to be dependent upon for a lot of innings this year. Uh, what, what have you seen from them? Uh, I haven't seen much from uh, Kenny just because he's been injured. Uh, when he was healthy in the uh, right before winter break, he was doing extremely well. Uh, AJ's, you know, done, you know, uh, I think he's just AJ. I think he's just, he's done what he's done in the past years. Uh, like coming from Jacksonville, he's just the same pitcher. I think he's, he's, he's a good guy. So. Did you have a pitcher kind of you kind of modeled your game or looked up to as you got into baseball that you looked up either in the big leagues or et cetera? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Andrew Miller and then uh, Cole Hamels. Anything else? How about Chris Thale? I, I saw uh, a little bit of that. When I saw you first time, I saw a little bit of that. Yeah, the arm slot definitely was that low back then, but uh, I think it's a little bit different now. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate everybody uh, coming out and uh, spending some time with us today. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Hunter.